Let's hop up here and look at our render and look at some of these properties that we have on this uh, strand section of our spline. Uh, object here. So let's just fire off a render and you can see we've got our splines here. I'm just going to increase the global scale multiplier. This global scale multiplier works just like the global scale multiplier in particles. It basically takes the p scale value that's already been assigned and just cranks it up by this value. So you can see here that I have a ramp that causes these splines to start very thin and get very thick towards the end which is apparent here. If we go down towards the beginning, you can see that that's, they're very thin down there and then they get very thick at the end. Um, and you can also notice the strip shape that we are rendering with here. Um, now we can choose how much uh, subdivision we want to allow this to have. That's supposed to refine like the resolution of the curve. A lot of times when I'm trying to save resources, I'll set this to zero and um, just to make sure it isn't subdividing any extra times. And it looks like it really didn't have any visual impact on what we're doing anyway. So might as well just leave it at zero. The other option here is to do like we did with particles. We can ignore that p-scale attribute. We can just override it by using this default scale attribute. So if I click ignore the p-scale attribute, we can just directly set the default scale. So I could set this to something like 0.01, and you can see that there's no length, there, there's no width variation of these splines along the length of the spline. So let's look at some of these other shapes. We can look at, I'm just going to reset this back to untick ignore p scale attribute and then maybe I'll control middle mouse click the default scale to set it back to default. Let's look at some of these other shapes. So we've got the strip that we're on now, it's sort of that one sided or you know just 2D flat polygon strip that's um, being swept along the spline. Then there is a box mode. You can see that it's kind of hard to see but it kind of makes these nice little um, box shaped splines. Um, and then there is cylinder mode. And you can see that that makes these nice, um, these nice uh, rounded tubes. These are really nice for um, all sorts of stuff. I use these a lot. And then there is the capsule mode. And you can see that all that's really done is just added a little um, rounded uh, tip to the end of our um, spline. So if we turn that back from cylinder to capsule, you can kind of see the difference that that makes. And then the other mode here is cone. And cone will... Uh, by default, I think, just try to uh, taper your splines for you. And you can see because I have a p-scale attribute on there already, it is tapering on and then back off. If I were to set this to ignore the p-scale attribute, it should start thick and then get thin towards the end. So if I bring that default scale back down again, you can see that it starts thick and gets thin. So that's sort of a way that you can control the width um, outside of having to go into dealing with the attributes and stuff like that. I'm just going to control middle mouse click the default scale, set it back to normal. Um, control click the global scale multiplier, set that back to normal. And check, I'm going to untick ignore the p scale attribute. And we're going to go and set this from cone back to uh, cylinder mode. I think that's the mode that I used for this project. Now, cylinder mode is a little bit more uh, expensive to compute, but um, I don't know. For whatever reason, I, I like it a lot and I end up using it quite a bit. Um, but it's just something to keep in mind that the more polygons we are uh, sweeping around, you know, it's a higher res sweep. So it's going to maybe take a little bit longer to load once you um, reintroduce all of the splines back into the scene. So let's just go do that right now and kind of see where where we're at. I'm going to kind of get my view. I'm going to zoom back to kind of normalize my view here. I could go view and then say frame all. Um, I think you hit the F key to do that. Yeah, it looks like you can hit the F key to frame all in this view. And then let's just jump back into the vortex and let's get, um, let's just disable the blast for right now. So instead of um, deleting it, I'm just going to hit this down yellow arrow and that's just going to disable it and give us all of our splines back. And there they are. Cool. So now let's assign a material to this and see what we can do to play with those uh, attributes a little bit.